baby doesn't even believe in you, <laughs> it is not going to be your year. It is not going to be your year, people. Um, hey, I'm going to jump right in today because you all look hungry for lunch. <laughs> is anybody already like thinking about lunch? Anybody just thinking about lunch? It's <laughs> a lot of people. I knew some of you were day- daydreaming about Takariho. Um, listen, if you are hungry already, that means I got a short window until you are hangry. And so I got to get right into it. So here's my question right out of the gate. I'm curious, how many of you still have your Christmas tree up? Come come on, who who was too lazy this last week to put up down your Christmas tree? All right, we got a lot more lazy people in the church than like motivated people. That's what we have. Um, Our Christmas tree is up because a few weeks ago, my wife said to me, she was like, honey, we're going to leave our Christmas tree up till March this year. I was like, Really? Are we, like, are we like those people now? Are we like year-round Christmas people? Um, anyway, so our Christmas tree is still up, and apparently it's going to be up till Easter. So if anybody sees any good like Easter bunny Christmas tree ornaments, text me. Um, we're going to need them. <laughs> hey, I, I know Christmas is over, but I have asked Santa for a Baltimore Ravens win today against the Rams. And listen, listen, I believe with Santa and Jesus working together, We are going to have victory in Baltimore today. That's what I'm hoping for. And if we don't, I'm probably going to just start rooting for the Eagles. (laughs) Because the Eagles, you guys are starting to look good. This is a one-time thing, I'm pretty sure. But you're looking good right now. Um, Anyway, I got to get out of that territory. Um, I know Christmas is over, but my favorite memory of my Christmas with my family this year was when we went to Shellville. Over here. Anybody do the Shellville thing? Who did Shellville? Wasn't it awesome? I, I walked out of Shellville feeling all warm inside. I was reminded that I can't roller skate anymore. <laughs> and listen, Shellville was free. Come on, free. My two favorite things in the world are Christmas and free. All right, so it was pretty great. Now, um, when we got there, the night we, got, we went, it was packed. All right, I'm talking like the line went from the gate to the Florida Keys. I mean, it was like people everywhere. But my brother works for Shell Brothers, and he he had these like golden ticket foil VIP thingies for us. And so we had we had literally had a golden ticket to Shellville, people. And so my brother, when he showed up, we're standing there at the gate, and my brother's like, "No, no, no, we we don't have to stand in line with all these normal peasants." We get to skip the line. And so I was like, I'll follow your lead, Tim. And so like, I'm following Tim. We had a golden ticket and I feel bad. I'm like walking by all these people in line. I'm like, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. We got a golden ticket and you don't. Um, We walk by our Millsboro worship leader, Corey. Listen, Corey's got his family. He's got a, he's had a newborn, a four-year-old. And like, we just walked right by him and he's like, what are you all doing? I'm like, we're, we're going in. <laughs> we got a golden ticket, and you don't. All right, I'll see you in there, bro. And so we went in, and we went into Shellville, and it's snowing. There's a Christmas tree maze. There was, there's food trucks. My, uh, my mom got some French fries from one of the food trucks. Well, let me just tell you, I think Santa himself made those French fries. Like, they had Christmas magic. All, they were so good. And there was all the little houses that the kids went crazy in and the, the, the train, the Christmas train. And my favorite part of the whole uh, experience at Shellville was when the train went through the, the, the light tunnel. You, you guys remember, you know about the light tunnel? All right, if you, don't, if you didn't go to Shellville, you didn't, you didn't go on the train, here's a picture of my kids going through the light tunnel. <laughs> Is that not the best picture ever? <laughs> Nora's face, that's what my face is going to look like if we actually win. The Ravens win today. That's what I'll look like. Um, anyway, we were having the best time in Shellville, all right? And so we're walking around, and our kids were like having a great time. And then out of nowhere, uh, my wife, all right, my amazing, gorgeous, smoke show of a wife, all right, out of nowhere, she's like, I bet some of these people got COVID. I'm like, what? Huh? <laughs> and then she's like, do you, do you hear about that school up in Dover that had to shut down because of COVID? She's like, baby, baby what, if, what if our kid's school sh- shuts down because of COVID? I'm like, no, 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 we, 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 we're, I'm in a winter wonderland bubble right now. Like, I, I can smell fresh pine and I see Santa right now. Like, we cannot talk about this right now. And so 
in the middle of Shellville, all right, the most happy place in all Sussex County, I am sure of it, all right, I started getting flashbacks to like March 2020. <laughs> I started remembering lockdowns. I started like re- remembering like Miss Patsy's face shield. I started remembering, like, sanitizing the groceries before we brought it in the house. Come on, who did it? Who did it? I don't know if it's scientifically working, but we did it, right? Um, and so I started, and when, when, when we had the lockdown originally, my kids' school shut down, I became my kids' homeschool teacher, which is not good for their education, all right? <laughs> And I remember like working with Nixon so hard to, to teach him the letter G. And listen, the letter G during the pandemic, that was my Xanax moment. That was when I could just I couldn't take it anymore. And I'm like, I can my kids' school cannot be closed. And if the pandemic taught me anything, it's that teachers, your annual salary should be $18 million. Okay, can we can we just give it up for our teachers? Like my goodness. And so in the middle of Shellville, Sage is like, what if, what if our kid's school closes, baby? I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm going to just lock myself in one of these little houses right now. I will come out next year. Um, but uh, here's my point. Here's my point. It just felt like things were just starting to get back to normal. Right? Like, like I, I don't know if you know this, but when, when 2021 started, all right, when last year started, we were online only. Our whole, our whole staff basically had COVID. So we were online only. <laughs> When 2021 started, I was teaching my kids, you know, homeschool because their school was virtual three days a week. When 2021 started, if you walked into the Wawa to get yourself a sub, but you forgot your face mask, I'm pretty sure they sent you to maximum security prison. Like, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. But, but all last year, it felt like things are starting to get back to normal. And, and don't you just miss normal? Does anybody just miss normal? Come on, raise your hand if you've said, I want or I miss normal. Look, we all (laughs) miss normal. And last year, I thought, we're getting there. It's starting to get back to normal. And then around Thanksgiving, somebody said, Omicron (laughs) or Omnicron. I'm like, what is that, an ingredient in the turkey? What is that? Is that the name of the new Coldplay album? Can I stream it on Spotify? What is it? But then all of a sudden, (laughs) it seemed like everybody's getting sick again, right? No lie. Three weeks ago, um, I'm, I'm officiating uh, a wedding. It's at, the, uh, it's at the Hickory Hill Methodist Church. And so we have a picture of this wedding that I'm officiating. This is Russell and Jessica from our church getting married. Um, and so I'm standing there. It, there's, there's almost 250 people at this wedding. So I'm standing there, you know, trying to act official. I'm trying to act like, you know, professional, which I'm not, you know, I'm just kind of myself, but I'm just like, trying to be professional. And all of a sudden, my watch starts vibrating because I'm getting a call in the middle of the the ceremony. So I'm like, and then my, my, my uh, phone was in my suit pocket. Some of you didn't know I owned a suit, but I I do. I own a suit. My phone is in my suit pocket and and it didn't start ringing. So I was like, and then my watch, or I mean, not my watch, my iPad is starting to vibrate. And I'm like, you know, trying to hide all this. And it's Bo Dukes. It's Bo. I'm like, Bo, my man, can you just like, I know you're excited about nacho fries from Taco Bell, but like I am marrying some people right now. And so I got done and then I checked my voicemail and, and, and Bo said, he's like, I got COVID. And this was, this was Saturday night. I'm like, I'm going to lead worship, I guess, tomorrow is what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> now it's three weeks ago. Bo's out of his isolation period. Don't freak out. Okay. <laughs> but guys, Things were just starting to get back to normal, and I miss normal, okay? I thought going into 2022, I was like, this is going to be my year. It's going to be the year of the comeback, like jump over a sign, you know, whatever. (laughs) And so, listen, everybody just say this with me. Everybody just say, I just want to get back to normal. normal. Look, we just want to get back to normal, and, and I was thinking about that this week, because we all want to get back to normal. But the more I thought about that this week, I thought, I don't, I don't want to get back to normal. I want to get back to better. Because listen, for most of us, normal is broke, right? Normal is bitter. Normal is mad at somebody, or 10 somebodies. 
Normal for most of us is stressed out, maxed out, overworked, and underappreciated. Am I preaching to anybody? Normal is being addicted to our phones, right? Like if that's normal, I don't want to get back to normal. I want to get back to better. And and you know what? This is what I believe. Some of you aren't going to believe this, but I believe that in 2022, we can still get back to better. I believe that this can be your comeback year. I believe that this can be your year. I I believe that. Now, I know some of you are like, well, Joel, have have you seen the headlines? (laughs) Did you hear what Dr. Fauci said? (laughs) Lord, help us. Listen, can I just give you a different headline? Can, Can I just read you God's headline? Is that okay? Okay, let me give you a different headline. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this. This is so good. Some of you came to church to hear this. For I, this is the, the Lord speaking. For I know the plans I have for you. They are plans for good and not disaster. Now, me, I'm like, well, wait, Lord, if I have to homeschool, teach my kid the letter G again, that is a disaster. But the Lord's like, yeah, you, you feel like that's a disaster, but I'm telling you, my plans for you are for good. They're not for a disaster, all right? And his plan is to give you a future and a hope. So so, Somebody just turn to somebody and say, there is hope for 2022. Come on, just talk to each other. There's hope for 2022. There is hope for 2022. There is hope for this year. Listen, God has a plan for your family in 2022. God has a plan for your dreams in 2022. God has a plan for your business in 2022. God has a plan for your love life in 2022. And all the single people in just, inside just said, hallelujah. <laughs> God has a plan for your football team maybe in 2022. <laughs> Unless you're a Washington football team fan and <laughs> nobody can save them. Okay, so anyway... <laughs> On the first Sunday of 2022, I want you to know there is hope for our future because our God has a plan. And the plan isn't to get back to normal. The plan is to get back to better. Does that sound good to anybody? You want to get back to better this year? I want us to get back to better this year. And so I have one point today. I know that's kind of a miracle in and of itself, but I just have one point today. And it says, we'll throw it on the screen. If you want to get back to better in 2022... Practice one, everybody say one, one One better habit. Now, I started out by telling you um, that one of my favorite places to go was Shellville, Uh, but one of my least favorite places to go is the dentist. Come on, who am I preaching to? Who does not like going to the dentist? Okay, yeah, if you like going to the dentist, you're a weirdo, all right? You need to... You need to knock it off. <laughs> now, I got to be careful. We have at least two dentists that I know come to our church. All right. So I'm sure I would love to go to your dentist's office. But I, <laughs> here's the thing. Um, up until recently, I hadn't been to the dentist's office in eight years, which considering my Mountain Dew intake is not my wisest choice. Okay. Like that's not... <laughs> Now, let me explain why there's been an eight-year gap. Um, My previous dentist dentist was this super sweet older man. Um, Now, I want to be careful because some of you are old. um, But (laughs) I promise you, nobody in this room was as old as my dentist was. All right? I don't think anybody in the world was as old as my dentist was. I think he was the world Guinness record holder of old, y'all. And I am, this is not an exaggeration. I would be in his office, and I'd be like in the, ta- in the chair, terrified. And my dentist would come shuffling in with a walker. No lie. With the, with the tennis balls on the legs and everything, just sliding her in, okay? And then he would say, open up and give me the drill. And I'm like, oh, Lord. And he had the shakes, so I'm like, this is how it's going to end for me. Um, <laughs> This is not a lie. Eight years ago, I randomly got a letter in the mail that said, we're sorry to let you know your dentist passed away from old age. So I literally lost my dentist, y'all. Like, I just I had no dentist. And, um, and then recently, my, my wife, she was, I guess, tired of my teeth or something. She's, she made me an appointment over here at the, the dental group with Dr. Layman. Anybody go to the, the dental group over here? That place is like a, 
It's like a UFO in there. It's like a spaceship. I was, I was used to like going to a dentist that had a walker and use like a chisel, a stone chisel. I walked in the dental group. I'm, I thought I was in the matrix. I thought a Neo, I think, cleaned my teeth. All right. Like, and the first thing I did was that uh, they had me bite this thing. I bit this thing and a robot started going around my head. And I'm, and I asked Neo or whoever was helping me, I was like, what, what are y'all doing? And she said, oh, we're just doing a full head scan. I was like, well, my wife's been asking me to get one of those. Okay, so <laughs> this is perfect. Um, but then I met with Dr. Laban. Dr. Laban is incredible, by the way. Um, but one of the things he said to me, he's like, you, you, your, your gums look irritated. Now, one habit I cannot get into on a regular basis is, is flossing my teeth. This is how it works for me. I floss for a week and I don't for a month. Is this, does anybody do that? And so right before I go to the dentist, I like go on a three-day floss binge. I'm like a, on a three, floss bender. All right, I'm out, I'm out of control. I'm just like going at it. And so when I showed up to Dr. Laban, my gums were all irritated. <laughs> this is real, right? And so he said, well, I, you know, one habit you should do, you should really like, you should floss your teeth. And I'm like, I agree. All right. If, if I will, I'll get in the habit of flossing my teeth if you get in the habit of not dying on me. Okay. So like, please. <laughs> but uh, li- listen, I have the bad habit of not flossing on a regular basis. Now the year started and I am now three for three. Okay. I've done three days in a row. Um, but how many of you have a bad habit or 10? Let me raise your hand if you have a bad habit of 10. Okay. That's a lot. Um, how many of you um, know your spouse has a bad habit? And just point at them. Just call them out. Throw them under the bus. <laughs> Listen, I think we all have bad habits. I'm going to prove it to you. Um, I, I, just, I need you to raise your hand if you have ever, ever, ever texted and driven. Come on, raise your hand if you've ever texted and driven. That's terrifying. Um, how many of you ever have slept through your alarm? Raise your hand if you ever slept through an alarm. <laughs> bad habit. How many of you have ever skipped a workout? You ever skipped a workout? Oh, yeah, glory. All right, how many of you ever skipped church? <laughs> Wait, raise your hand again. Raise your hand again. <laughs> I'm serious. I need to know who to pray for this year. Raise your hand if you skip church. <laughs> all right, I'm praying for you all. Um, <laughs> listen, we all, have, we all have some bad habits. Now, I want to jump back to Jeremiah 29, all right? Well, that's where we read earlier where, where God says, you know, I know the plans I have for you, plans for good, you know, not for disaster, plans for hope and a future. God wrote this, or God said this, to, uh, the, to the Israelites, all right? And the Israelites were being held in captivity in Babylon, okay? So the Israelites had been kidnapped and were being held prisoner in a foreign land. This is, this is worse than quarantine, people, okay? This is worse. And so the reason that they're being held captive in Babylon is because they had some bad habits. Their bad habit was they just wanted to ignore what God wanted them to do, and they just wanted to do whatever they wanted. And so their bad habit got them in a bad situation, which really explains most of our lives, right? That's pretty much how it works. Um, and so the, the Israelites get in Babylon, they're exiled, but when they show up in Babylon, they're like, oh, we, we won't be here for very long. We'll be here for a year, tops. All right, then everything's going to go back to normal. Does this sound familiar? Like they just tell, we'll be here a year tops and then we'll, everything will go back to normal. And then this is what God says to them. Jeremiah 29, five through six, build homes. Huh? What? <laughs> that sounds like we're, I thought we we're going back like to normal. And God says, no, no, no. Build homes and plan to stay. Uh-oh. And then he tell, gives them these habits. He says, how about you do this? Plant gardens and eat the food they produce marry and have children, then find spouses for your children so that they may have many grandchildren. Multiply. Everybody say multiply. multiply. Now, that's not, a, that's not a math problem. <laughs> Just let that sink in for a second. Somebody's going to go home and be like, hey, baby, the Bible says multiply. So <laughs> anyway, um, I got to get off that topic. Multiply and do not dwindle away. Everybody say do not dwindle away. So basically, God's saying to the Israelites, hey, you thought this season was temporary, but you're going to be in this a little longer than you thought. And so I want you to develop some good habits because I don't want you to go back to normal. I want you to go back to better. In other words, I feel like God's saying, if you want a better tomorrow, practice better habits today. 
today. Because isn't it true that we all want a better future someday? Isn't that true we all want a better future someday? Okay, we want that, but, but don't miss this, okay? You don't get to a better future tomorrow if you don't practice better habits today. And if you want this year, I want this year to be better than normal. If you want this year to be better than normal, focus more on what you do rather than just wishing for what you want. Focus more on what you do than rather wishing for what you want. Because we all just like had these New Year's resolutions. They're all wishes, right? We're like, I wish I could like spend more time with my kids and less time on my phone. Great. <laughs> but what are you going to do about it? You know, or your, your New Year's resolution could be, I wish I could be more generous this year and help more people out. Great. <laughs> but what are you going to do about it? Or I, I wish I could like grow stronger in my faith. Great. But what are you going to do about it? I, I wish I could, you know, have a happier marriage. Great. But what are you, you going to do about it? Okay. I, I wish I could, you know, stop drinking so much because I keep on like getting naked and running down Route 1 with a lampshade on my head. <laughs> we wish you'd stop doing that too. Okay. So, <laughs> but what, what are you going to do about it? Right. <laughs> or you could say like, I, w- I wish I could get, I wish I could get in better shape. Great. What are you going to do about it? I, 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 wish I, could, I wish I just knew where to go to meet a good single Christian guy or a good single Christian girl. Hello? <laughs> you know? And, but, but if you want a better year than normal, focus more on what you do rather than just wishing for what you, you want. I don't know about you, but I have a tendency, I focus all this time on the goal and I forget about all the habits to, to, to get there. You, anybody else do this? Let me give you an example. It's not a personal example. Um, I could give you a million personal examples, but I'd rather just throw my wife under the bus right now. Okay, so. um, uh, (laughs) All right, so um, how do I start this out? How do I start this out with my wife there and me not getting in trouble? Um, So here's the thing. I have this tendency that I can get rid of things real quick. Real quick. Now, my wife, on the other hand, all right, not so quick. My, my wife has this uh, robe that is, I feel like it's as old as the original Bible. Like it's, uh, the robe is, and it's not even really a robe anymore. It's more like a health hazard. It's got these old food stains on it. It has like this pocket that's not even really a pocket anymore. It literally just hangs there by one thread, like waiting to be put out of its misery. All right. And so Stacy has all this stuff. Now she got um, she got a new robe for Christmas. Now, did she get rid of the old robe? No, no, because Stacy never got rid of anything in her life. My spiritual gift, though, <laughs> my spiritual gift is getting rid of things. Listen, my kids draw seventy five pictures a day, and I don't even feel it when I throw them in the trash. <laughs> Yeah, see? Uh, listen, my kids don't even think I love them anymore. I throw so much of their stuff away. Like I, and I have this habit. My habit is every time like, I get something, I get rid of something. That's this is a habit. Like Every time I get a new shirt, I get rid of an old shirt. Every time I get a new pair of pants, I get rid of an old pair of pants. Every time I get a new pair of shoes, I get rid of an old pair of shoes. Like I have this one-in, one-out habit, and I am so invested in this habit that if Stacy ever said, hey, we're having another kid, I'd be like, well, we got to offload one kid. <laughs> Load up, kids. We're going to Goodwill. All right. So (laughs) now my wife has the goal, the goal of getting rid of clutter, but the habit of actually getting rid of things, that is her Xanax moment. Okay. That is what stresses her out. And she would put her Xanax pills in the the robe pocket, but there's a hole in the pocket. Okay. So she can't, it won't hold anything. (laughs) Um, But sometimes we fall in love with the goal and then we don't like follow through with the habit to get there. Okay, so for instance, maybe you have a, a goal of being, getting rid of clutter this year. And so maybe you just get in the habit of one, one drawer a week you go through and you just get rid of everything in that drawer you haven't worn in the last year or the last decade or century, okay? I don't know, like whatever. <laughs> Maybe you have a goal of reading 10 books this year. All right, you put that on your New Year's resolution. Okay, well, get in the habit of reading maybe 10 pages of a book a day. Maybe you have a goal of getting in shape this year, so you get more fire emojis in your Instagram comments or whatever. I don't know. 
But you got to get in the habit of maybe like working out more days a week than you don't, or, you know, get in the habit of eating kale, or just get in the habit of walking to the mailbox <laughs> instead of taking a Segway to the mailbox, okay? Like, what? Just. <laughs> but we need to, if you want to reach your goal, you got to spend more time on the habit than the goal itself. And uh, you probably heard this, but um, how many of you have heard that it takes 21 days for something to become a habit? You ever, you ever heard this? You heard this? Okay. The results are in, and we have determined that is a lie. <laughs> that is a, a lie. The, the reason I know that is because many of you know last spring, I quit Mountain Dew for 90 days. I was 90 days Mountain Dew sober. <laughs> so it's a habit, right? 90, 20, like it's, it's a habit, right? Wrong. I had a Mountain Dew yesterday. Wrong. <laughs> Current research says it can take anywhere from 18 to 254 days for something to become a habit. 254 days. And where did they come up with that? I have no idea. It's probably made up, but that's, that's, that's the number, 254 days. Here's what I do know. On day 90 of not having Mountain Dew, I still wanted to have a Mountain Dew. And so I had one, and it was delicious. Okay, so if you want a better 2022, develop habits to get to your goal. And eventually that goal will become your identity. Uh, have anybody read the book Atomic Habits? Anybody read that, that book? Okay, it's a great, great, great book. The author says, this is how it works. We'll, we'll put this on the screen. He says uh, that you start with a goal and then, oh, nope, we'll go back to the last one, Leon. Okay, you start with a goal and then you develop habits to get to your goal. And then after you stick with those habits for maybe 254 days, that will become, that goal will become your identity. So it's goal, habit, identity. Goal, habit, identity. Goal, habit, identity. You got it? Do you need an example? Okay, I'll give you an example. So uh, let, let's say um, that your goal is for your family to go to church together in 2022. It's a great goal. Okay, you should, you should do that. But your habit to get to that goal is every Sunday morning, you got you to wake up to an alarm. Ugh. And then you, got, you get, get in the habit of making your coffee, you wake up, and then you have to yell at your kids for 37 minutes straight to get in the van. Yes. And if you do that every Sunday, by the end of this year, not only will your kids not like you anymore because you yell at them so much, but <laughs> your identity will be that we are a go-to-church family. Somebody says to you, hey, hey, Ed, or hey, who are you? I'm Ed. I'm a go-to-church guy, okay? So it's your goal, your habit, your identity. Goal, habit, identity, all right? And so that's kind of how this works. So here, here's what I want to ask you today. I got a question. You, you guys ready? Yep. You guys ready over here, this section? Yes. Front rowers over here. Yeah. Eagles fan, you ready? Okay, all right, here's my question for you. We'll put this on the screen. What's one thing God wants you to change so you can be better this year than last year? What's one thing God wants you to change? Not so he loves you more. We're not into that around here. We believe that God loves you just as you are, okay? He loves you. That's not the point. But can you honor him more with your life, okay? Yes. And so what's one thing God wants you to change so you can be better this year than last year? If you want this to be the year of your comeback, what do you normally do that you can change this year so you can be better uh, this year than last year? Now, some of you are like, well, I got 30 goals, Pastor Joel, and I put them in Excel. Great. You're an overachiever. Okay, but, you know, I just want you to pick one thing or you probably won't do anything. Isn't that how that works? So just pick one thing and make it achievable. Lower the bar, people. You know, some of you are like, my goal this year is to get in shape and work out four hours a day. Ugh. <laughs> Great, but you never even worked out for an hour in your life. So maybe start with like 15 minutes, you know, like, <laughs> but you just stick with it and eventually it'll become your identity because it's a goal, a habit and your identity. Okay. And so I'm biased, but I'm going to give you three that I think are some of the best goals that you can have this year. We'll, we'll put this on the screen. All right. Three best goals. I think that maybe you should consider number one, keep showing up in church, which you're doing right now. High fives, everybody. High fives, high fives, okay? Keep showing up in church. Start reading your Bible. And if you don't have a Bible, we will give you one for free. It is free, free, free. Out in the lobby, just grab one. It's not stealing. But start reading your Bible. And start believing that the best is still ahead, people. Now, here, here's why I picked these three, all right? Um, 
Let's go back to March 2020. When, when March 2020 happened, okay, when it, when it started to happen, I, I realized that we were heading into the COVID zombie apocalypse. And, and when that happened, um, church, which we were online only back in March 2020, but church, reading my Bible and, uh, and believing that the best is still ahead, even though every news headline said it's the end of the world as we know it. But listen, church, reading the Bible and believing that there's a better day in the future, that got me through the pandemic. It got me through. Listen, Tiger King did not get me through. (laughs) Facebook definitely did not get me through. Hello. Those government stimulus checks didn't get me through, but it sure helped. (laughs) Come on, whoever you know, those are nice. Um, Anyway, but... This is what got me through. And you might say, well, I, I, can't, I can't read my Bible for like an hour a day like Pastor Joel. Listen, I don't read my Bible an hour a day. I got kids, people. I got you all texting me in the middle of the night like, oh, my wife just threw a frying pan at my head. I need prayer. <laughs> and another frying pan or whatever. I don't like. I got 20 minutes in the morning. And that's when I sit down and I read my Bible. And, and, and you, can, you can do that. And I'm so thankful you guys chose the first Sunday of the new year to come to church. I hope you keep coming to church. And, and here's why. Here's why. I want you to walk out of here feeling better than you walked in here feeling. That's what I want. I don't know if you know what the gospel means. The gospel means good news. <laughs> and I, I don't know about you. I've been to some churches where I'm sitting there and I'm like, is, this all, is it all bad news? Is there any good news? In, have anybody been to the Bad News Church? You've been to the Bad News Church? <laughs> yeah. Listen, that is not our church. All right, we preach the gospel. And the gospel means good news. So if you walk out of here feeling worse than you walked in here feeling, I didn't do my job right. And just so you know, all right, this is kind of something I found out this week looking into this. This past year, you probably don't know this, but the almost 30%, 29% of pastors and church staffers either quit the church or considered, like, cons- seriously considered quitting the church this last year. 29% of people who do what I do, because it's been hard to lead through this pandemic, 29% of pastors either quit or seriously considered quitting. Now, I just want you to know that there is not one ounce of me that wants to quit. There's not one ounce of me that wants to quit. Not one. Why would I quit? I have the greatest job in the world. I get to tell you the good news of Jesus. Like, that's what I get to do. And I hope you keep coming back here because my job literally is to tell you the good news of Jesus. And so what's, what's one thing that God wants you, me, us to change this year so we can be better next year? I'm sorry, better this year than we were last year. Just one thing. And so create a goal get some habits around it, and stick to it. It could take 254 days, and eventually that will become your identity. Now, I want you to know that Jesus is our ultimate identity. Look, Jesus, you are his kid, and God has a plan for you. We read it in Jeremiah earlier where God says, I have a plan for you, and it's for good and not disaster. I want to give you hope and a future. Listen, that, that's your identity. That is your identity. I want to tell you on the first Sunday of the new year, we all make these like resolutions. The top three resolutions have to do with our weight and um, getting in shape and uh, our, our money. That's what we make our resolutions about. I just want to tell you a different side of things because some of you that you made that your resolution, I want you to hear this. Somebody came to church because you need to hear this. You're not simply a number on a scale. You're not a number in a bank account. You're not the worst that somebody else says about you. You are more than all that. You are a child of God. You're not an addict. You're not a divorcee. You're not your worst moment. You are a child of God. You're more than your medical condition. You're more than your follower account. You're more than your job title. You are a child of God. You're not hopeless. You're not done. You're not garbage. You're a child of God, and the best is still ahead, and this can be the year of your comeback. I believe that. I believe that. Now, we all want to get back to normal. And again, the more I thought about that this week, the more I thought, I don't want to get back to normal. I want to get back to better. So what's one thing, one thing that you can change this year so you can be a better version of you this year than you were last year? I'm going to end with this. Um, 
Last January, uh, basically the entire world, including our pastoral staff, all had COVID. Now, um, I had just gotten out of isolation for COVID at the beginning of January. L- last Christmas, our family had COVID. Merry Christmas. Like, it gave a whole new meaning to the movie Home Alone. Like, we just <laughs> lived out the movie Home Alone at home. Um, anyway, so when January started, uh, all of our other pastors, you know, were, were sick. And so they're, they, like, got up with me. They're like, Joel, you're up. You got to preach because we're all in a hazmat suit right now. And so I was like, okay, got it. And uh, I went to our Millsboro campus to record the first message of the year last year. And it was just me in an empty, dark auditorium with two camera people. Now, you've probably never done this, but there's nothing lonelier (laughs) than preaching and telling jokes in an empty auditorium. (laughs) So that was tough sledding. So I got through it. And, um, and then after I did my message and I recorded, the, the, the camera guys left, and it was just me in the dark, empty church. And I was like, hmm. And I, I straight up had a moment where I thought, are, are we going to get back together? And I thought, like, is, is, God, is this it? Are we, are we done? Do, we, do, we, do I plunge? Do I click clock? Like, how, how, like what, what do I do now? And I, I had that moment. And one, one year later, literally exactly one year later, I just want to tell you that your faithfulness to our church, your faithfulness to a little church in a basement, I don't have words. You guys kept showing up. You, you, you kept giving. You kept serving. You inspire me. You guys inspire me. I just want to say thank you. And I started the year knowing like, or thinking like, are, are we done? And, and listen, you know what we did last year? We know that 41 people got saved in this room last year. That's what we know. Amen. 41 people got saved in this room. 21 people got baptized right over here. You guys gave way more than you have ever given before. We added Nate and Jen to our team. We started Celebrate Recovery with Sean. We gave kids Christmas this year that didn't have Christmas. Listen, I, I started out the year thinking, are we done? And I ended the year knowing we aren't even close to done, people. We're not close to done. And I am done with normal. I want to get back to better. I want to get back to better. And I hope you want to get back to better because I think no matter what happens in the news this year, I believe this can be the year of your comeback for me, for you, and for us. Do you believe that? You want this to be the year of your comeback? You want to believe that? I believe that. I'm ending. I am. I want to reread Jeremiah 29, 5, 6 to end the first service of the year. This is what God said. Build homes and plan to stay. Plant gardens and eat the food they produce. Marry and have children. Then find spouses for your kids so they can move out your basement so that they may have many grandchildren. Listen, multiply and do not dwindle away. That's what I want you to hear today. Do not dwindle away. Do not dwindle away. This year, do not dwindle away. Do you believe it? Do you believe this is going to be your year? Do you believe you're not going to dwindle away? Because I believe that for you. Do not dwindle away. Everybody just say, do not dwindle away. I love it. Let me pray for you guys. Jesus, I'm, I'm so thankful for your words in Jeremiah because I think, I think they're so timely. I think so often we're like, okay, this is a season. Let's move out of this season. Let's go back to normal. And, you know, you, you just said build houses and plan to stay. Like this, this, things aren't the way we think they're going to go. But what we do know is you said you have the plans for our future. And they're plans for good and not disaster. You want to give us a hope and a future. And somebody in this room, they, they walked in not thinking they have a future. God, bring that future back to them. Help them to know there is hope. And the hope isn't in the headline. The hope is in you. And so, God, I believe that. I'm starting out this year fresh and believing that the best is still ahead. And I pray that we'll walk out of here knowing that the best is still ahead because you are in our lives. We just believe that, Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen.